Hello and welcome. In a past video that I made, Lectron sent me this adapter right here. And this is an adapter that adapts from a Tesla connector type, which looks like this. And with that adapter, it is then able to connect to non-Tesla vehicles that use the J1772 plug that looks just like this. So that was very nice of them to send me this. If you're interested in seeing that video that I made, I'll put a card here above that you can go watch and see that. Well, in that video, I compared that adapter to this one, which is the uh, other direction. This adapts from a J1772, and then you can plug that into a Tesla vehicle so that you can charge a Tesla from a, a J1772 type public uh, charging uh, connection or a, a Juicebox Pro 40, which is what I use, for instance. And, and this adapter is the one that comes with every Tesla when you purchase a, a new Tesla. Well, Electron has a version of it as well. They look nearly identical, and Electron has sent me this adapter to review. So I thought I would check it out, see if it's any different. And um, upon first comparison, you'll see that basically they are almost identical. The uh, one difference that I can see is right here around this edge is a little bit of a flange that sticks out, but that is definitely not a functional difference. It, it shouldn't matter. There's a little bit of a design style right here that's different on the clips. But otherwise, these are the exact same height, and the uh, mechanical inner workings look to be slightly different. If you look right there, uh, you'll see that the inside of the connection points is uh, designed slightly differently. But those are minor uh, differences, and functionality-wise, they should still work exactly the same. So let's try it out. Let's try this in the garage. This is our overhead charging adapter, which uh, you can see more about on another video, which I'll link to above. So right now, I don't have the adapter on here. So this is the uh, J1772 port that this adapter is for. So I will now plug this in. The adapter, as you can see, plugs in perfectly fine on this, just like that. And now let's try it in the car. Oh man, that's really stiff, but it's working. You see that green light is blinking. And if we come up here and look at the car, we can see the car is showing that it's still ramping up the charge. And I'm gonna turn off the, the HVAC system by pressing and holding this fan button down below. That turns it off. And then here you can see that the kilowatts is going to keep ramping up. The reason why I turned off the heater is because it uses up some of the energy and it throws off this time estimate. So right now, uh, the car is at 61%. I have it set to charge to 80 and it's at the full 40 amp uh, charge limit right now and it's charging at 9 kilowatts. So this adapter is working just fine just like the manufacturer adapter. The main limitation about this adapter is simply how snug it is. So if I wanted to stop charging for instance I would press this button. When that light turns white it's now ready to be pulled out. So then I have to let go of this this latch and then I use it Oh, it, no, it just retook it. So I have to push this, interrupt charging, wait till it unlocks, and then it won't come out very easily. Oh, now it's orange. So it's not making full connection for some reason. There we go. So if I jerk hard enough, it'll come out. Uh, but this adapter is just a little bit thicker than the, uh, the Tesla adapter. So let's try that again. I'm going to open this push this in yeah it's definitely a lot stiffer going in and then it works but to get it back out you definitely can't just pull with you know if, if like with the other adapter i can just take this off and just take this off and then just pull this out but right now it's not coming <laughs> now it's trying to close on me yeah it won't come out so pretty much i have to push on uh, and, and use my leverage from this handle and you know, I have to press the button, get it to stop charging, get it to unlock, and then relock it and pull it out before <laughs> it locks onto it again. So it works, but it's not ideal. Alternatively, I could have told the car to stop charging from my phone, or I could have gone into the center MCU and told it to stop charging there. Then the light on the outside of the car would have turned white, and then I could have just pulled it out without messing with the timing of uh, you know, telling it to stop charging via the cord. However, the real world practice is it's a lot easier just to push that button on the J1772 connector to have it stop charging and then just pull them both out at the same time 
we do this every day. It's not a big deal for us normally, but with this adapter being so snug, it definitely makes this more tricky. And I know my wife wouldn't like having to do it. Having tested it here at home, I wanted to test it at my place of work to just verify that it works as in a second place at least. So let's go check it out. Here I am at where I work. And since they have EV charging here and I have often charged here in the past, let's go ahead and test this out and see how well the adapter works here. Hmm, it's getting an orange error. And over here, it does say it is charging. So let me try taking that out and putting it in again, see what that does. Maybe I didn't push it far enough because it's so stiff. Okay, so now it's just blue. Okay, now it's green. Because this adapter is so stiff, you definitely have to push extra careful and make sure it's getting full contact inside, otherwise it doesn't work but it is working. And now that we've done that, we can come up here and check the car. And the car is showing that it's charging at five kilowatts. This is a commercial building, so it's 208 volts, which is typical. And then this particular circuit is uh, 32 amp. So it's a 40 amp circuit and it's allowing it to charge at 32 amps. So definitely would work for where I work. After I finished that last clip, I put the camera down and tried using both hands to plug in and then unplug. And it was a little bit easier, but it's still on the snug side. And if you don't leave the handle locked onto it, you simply can't get it out. Like I tried taking the handle off and then just I tried pulling it out just by grabbing this part and it was too tight in there. I couldn't get it out. So when I hold these next to each other, they look virtually the same size. Uh, I think there's just some subtle difference in the shape. I'm not really sure. If you're interested in purchasing this adapter, it is a little bit cheaper than the Tesla adapter and you can see a link for it down in the description below to Amazon. And I hope this was helpful to give you an idea of how well this adapter works. And uh, we'll be getting back to our road trip series down to St. George in the next video. Thanks for watching.